One night in 1969, a politician attending a campaign event saw something truly unexpected in the sky. He, along with several others, would remember the experience for decades to come, although all those years never got them any closer to understanding exactly what happened. That's surprising because if anyone ever had the power to get to the bottom of what they saw that night, it was him. The politician would go on to have an incredible career. In fact, he eventually became the president of the United States. You won't want to miss this one. By 1969, Jimmy Carter was well on his path to success. You see, he had just finished serving. We all know that he succeeded in landing the governorship, which then paved the path to the presidency. But the history books leave something out. Jimmy Carter had an experience which, like millions of other Americans and people worldwide, that he was never able to explain. You see, Carter said that he was about to give a speech at the local Lions Club branch in the small town of Leary in Georgia, about roughly 90 minutes south of Columbus. And shortly before he was scheduled to talk at 7.30 p.m., Carter was standing in the parking lot just visiting with some of the guests, and that was when one of them pointed to something up in the sky. In short, it was an object, it was flying, and it was unidentified. Carter said that the thing appeared around 7.15, basically. Whatever it was rose to the west of them about 30 degrees over the horizon, and the entire time it was visible, it appeared bright, as bright as the moon, and just as white. But unlike the moon, it moved. Clearly, it wasn't anything ordinary. Whatever it was, it traced a path towards them, and then it stopped above a cluster of pine trees in the distance. The future president was never able to accurately estimate exactly how close it was. Sometimes he said it was about a thousand yards away. Other times he said it was as close as three football fields. Now, over the decades, Carter has described his UFO sighting in greater detail. He has said that there were about 20 people standing outside of a small restaurant, which he believes was a high school lunchroom. And when a kind of green light just appeared in the western sky. Now, this occurred right after sundown, and the light grew brighter and brighter, and suddenly, one of the men in the group looked up and exclaimed, look over in the west, and they all saw a bright light there in the sky, and as they watched, the light drew closer and closer to their location until it stopped beyond the pine trees. Now, at that point, the light suddenly changed color, first to blue, then to red, and finally back to white. The group tried their best to determine what the object could possibly be, but then it receded into the distance. Now, eventually, the light disappeared completely, and Carter noted that the light had no solid substance to it and described it as a very peculiar looking light. None of the people in the group could even remotely comprehend what they had just witnessed. Now, the entire time, Carter said that the object was constantly changing its size, its color, and how bright it was. And when it was at its largest, it was about half the size of a full moon. Despite how close it got, he never noticed any sort of sound, which would seem to rule out any conventional aircraft. Remember, this is 1969, we didn't exactly have drones, or at least none that were publicly known about, and engines were even louder than they are today. And so the object just vanished in the direction it had come from back into the west. From start to finish, the entire sighting lasted no longer than 15 minutes. This meant that it lasted right up until when Carter was scheduled to talk. But the event left an impression on him, 
and he used a small tape recorder in his car to detail the sighting. He eventually made an official report of the incident to a UFO reporting center, which you can actually see right here. So what happened next? Well, if there is ever anyone in a position to find out about what their UFO sighting actually was, it was someone like Jimmy Carter. But despite becoming one of the most powerful people on the planet, he was never able to answer that question or at least if he did, he could never make the official answer public. And so over the years, Carter offered a number of explanations. He mentioned that his experience took place close to a nearby military installation, suggesting that it might have been something from a base, a piece of technology that he didn't quite understand. In fact, in his memoir, A Full Life, Reflections at 90, Jimmy Carter addressed the topic. And he wrote that later, while in public office, he was asked if he had ever seen a UFO. And in response, he provided the brief account of his experience. And Carter clarified that he never believed there was any extraterrestrial involvement and instead just said that the object he witnessed was likely some kind of military balloon or another device from a nearby Fort Benning, which is a major military base. However, he acknowledged that this disclaimer had not dampened the intense interest that some people have in the prospect of interstellar travelers having been seen by one of America's presidents. Carter concluded by affirming that what he saw was indeed a UFO, an unidentified flying object. Now, even before he became America's 39th president, Jimmy Carter was mentioning his UFO sighting in passing. The experience really seemed to have this profound impact on him. Until at that point, politicians had usually dismissed notions of life form on other planets, but whatever happened that night in 1969, Carter appeared to really take it to heart. On the campaign trail, he made his stance very clear, and he stated that he was convinced that UFOs exist because he had seen one himself. And Carter also expressed that he would never make fun of people who claimed to have seen unidentified objects in the sky and went on to promise that if he were to become president, he would make every piece of information the country has about UFO sightings available to both the public and the scientific community. Yeah, sure, Jimmy. We all know that didn't happen. Look, it's 2024 and we still don't have UFO disclosure. Uh, what? Look. No one can say for certain exactly what happened to this campaign promise. I mean, we all know that politicians make them and they never follow through. But you'd think that President Carter would have at least tried to deliver the goods on this particular case. Meaning he had a sighting himself. He knew how impactful something like this could have been. And so what was his track record regarding the UFO issue. Now, basically, it was the same as every other American president who has ever mentioned UFOs. We got nothing. And in fact, as recently as 2007, Carter was pressed on the issue by some podcasters when asked whether or not he looked into the issue of UFOs while serving as president. And Carter only said that, I can't respond to that so far as I know, they're not hiding information. Yeah, okay, Jimmy, <laughs> you keep believing that, buddy. So in spite of having such a deep interest in the topic, Jimmy Carter seemed to have kind of just given up on the whole UFO thing. Or maybe he was told not to talk about it. Hmm. Unfortunately, we'll never know since he passed away in 2023. Now, as far as the information that Jimmy Carter was going to, so we'll supposedly going to release to the public, it will forever remain a mystery. It's always interesting when famous people like American presidents and celebrities see UFOs. And for years, the media has just conditioned us to believe that the only people who see that sort of thing are people with very low credibility. Now, listen, 
you and me, well, we know that plenty of reputable folks see things they can't explain, but you've got to admit, as a fan of the paranormal, it kind of feels good when someone in the public eye chooses to step forward to share their own experience or encounter. And not only does it show that these sort of things happen to everyone, but it also encourages more witnesses to open up about what they've experienced as well. A rising tide lifts all ships, like they say. And listen, there's been no shortage of high profile people who have now come forward with their own experiences. In fact, one celebrity who has been open about his encounters is movie director Guillermo del Toro. And he has always had an interest in the paranormal and his films, they always contain some element of the supernatural. Now, clearly his passion for the topic runs deep, but has he ever seen something himself that he couldn't explain? Well, as it turns out, Guillermo had a sighting not much different than Jimmy Carter's because he saw a UFO as well. Now, Guillermo said that while he was living in Mexico, he and an old friend went out to buy a six pack of beer and their plan was just to you know, go out and enjoy the evening under the stars and talk about their lives. And so Guillermo actually went and bought the beer and the two of them headed out to a place on the edge of Guadalajara, which is known more commonly as Cerro del Cuatro or the Mountain of the Four. And this was a picturesque place for them to just pass the time. And so after settling in by the freeway alongside their parked car, Guillermo and his friend were simply just sitting there and ready to start drinking. However, before they were even able to crack open their beers, something appears in the sky and Guillermo admitted that he sounded like a complete lunatic, but he claimed to have seen a UFO. Now, despite not wanting to see one, he and his friend were the only people by the freeway when they spotted a light on the horizon and it was moving at an incredibly fast speed in a non-linear trajectory. And Guillermo even told his friend to honk and flash the lights, and they started honking at the object. Now, according to Guillermo, the object moved from roughly a thousand meters away to a much closer distance in less than a second. And he described the experience as so crappy and reported that the UFO was a flying saucer, a cliched appearance complete with, you know, blinking lights. And Guillermo even emphasized the intense fear and in that he had never been that scared in his entire life. In response to the sighting, Guillermo and his friend just quickly jumped into the car and drove away at a high speed. Guillermo just kept looking back and noticed that the UFO seemed to be following them. However, when he looked back again and the object had disappeared, well, he wasn't sure what to make of it. Now, normally any of us would have found an experience like that completely remarkable, but looking back on it, Guillermo still thinks of his sighting in filmmaking terms. He said that the UFO was horribly designed like a science fiction cliche. He believes he would have done a much better job of coming up with something much more original if he had put one onto one of his films. This UFO isn't the only weird thing that Guillermo has experienced. In fact, he also told interviewers that he has never seen a ghost, but he has heard them twice, in fact. Normally, Guillermo has one condition whenever he travels abroad. He likes to request haunted hotel rooms. Usually, not a lot happens until one time he got exactly what he was looking for. You see, Guillermo worked on the adaptation of J.R.R. Tolkien's The Hobbit for several years at a time. And although legal issues prevented his version of the film ever getting made, he got deep into the pre-production process, meaning that he was almost ready to film before the rug was pulled out from underneath him. Now, Guillermo was, he resided in a hotel located in the town of Waitomo. And so Guillermo recounted his bizarre experience 
stating that he had heard what sounded like a horrific murder being committed in the room he was staying in. Genuinely terrified by the incident, he found himself unable to sleep at all that very night. And Guillermo noted that the strange thing was that the following morning, despite not having slept, he didn't feel tired. Instead, he was wired, he was frightened, his adrenaline was going through the roof, and he admitted that he had never imagined experiencing such things in his life. He even described the ordeal as absolutely terrifying. Remember, he always asks for haunted hotel rooms, so apparently this place had a reputation for paranormal activity. Although you can't help but wonder whether or not he actually heard a crime being committed in the next room over. Yikes, because when his version of The Hobbit fell apart, he actually incorporated this experience into his next film, the historical horror film, Crimson Peak. Spoiler alert, there's actually a point where one character hears a murder in a bathtub. Now, Guillermo said that the second time he heard a ghost was at his parents' house. You see, growing up, Guillermo was deeply influenced by his uncle, whom he was named after. In fact, Guillermo del Toro credits his uncle with fostering his interest in the horror, the occult, and the supernatural. Well, as it turns out, Guillermo and his uncle actually made a pact. They agreed that whoever was first to die should come back from beyond to let the other know that the afterlife does exist. Well, his uncle was 20 years older and he passed away first. And so it seems like Guillermo's uncle made good on his promise. And while staying in his uncle's room at his parents' home as a schoolboy, Guillermo began investigating the source of the sound, not feeling scared at first, but then that would change. He pushed the pillow to see if it was making the noise and checked to see if it could be coming from the window or a draft, and he would move through the room, and he would notice that there was a breathing noise that seemed to move along with him. And now it started to freak him out. And so at some point, he sat on the bed and really considered the possibility that he might be pushing the air out of the mattress cushion. But to test this theory, he put his ear against the mattress and he heard the sigh coming from inside bouncing off the coils with a slightly metallic sound. And at that moment, Guillermo recognized the voice as his uncle's, realizing that it was a ghost. And Guillermo freaked out. He runs away and he never slept in that room again and never heard his uncle's voice thereafter. Now, as far as the UFO that Guillermo saw and his paranormal experiences, well, it does remain a mystery, but if anything, they're entertaining. Unlike a lot of other celebrities out there, Canadian comedian and actor Dan Aykroyd has never been shy about his experiences with the paranormal because as it turns out, he actually comes from a long line of ghost investigators and spiritualists, all the way back to at least his great grandfather. In fact, his father wrote a book called The History of Ghosts, and Aykroyd's even had a family medium on call, and for several decades, they would invite Walter Ashthurst into their home on Sunday evenings after gathering everyone, Walter would contact the spirit world, channeling ghosts to speak with the family in the comfort of their own home. As a matter of fact, you can see this influence all over his work. In fact, it's one of the reasons why he created the Ghostbusters film franchise. And to this day, he's a regular guest on all sorts of paranormal programming. Hey, uh, Aykroyd, reach out to me, buddy have your agent contact me, where he often appears as a host. But it isn't just ghosts that have captured Dan Aykroyd's imagination over the years. He has also had a long fascination with the topic of UFOs, appearing on various news shows and podcasts to discuss the subject. His liquor company, Crystal Head Vodka, is actually bottled in a glass skull. 
and it's a reference to the famous crystal skull artifacts, which are commonly, well, maybe not commonly, but they are found in South America, which many researchers have linked to extraterrestrials or Nephilim. Now, he stated that two of the UFOs were definitely some kind of aerial constructs, and one of them had a light while the other was a dull gray color, and both appeared to be structured objects. And Dan mentioned that one of these UFOs that he saw was moving it very slowly, while the other just hovered directly over him. Additionally, he did recall two other sightings that he, his wife, and friends witnessed many, many years ago in Martha's Vineyard, which he described as high altitude sightings. And now Dan has gone on to explain all of his sightings in greater detail. Now, regarding the Martha's Vineyard incident, he recounted that the following story is true. One night at about three in the morning, Dan stepped out onto the deck to relieve himself. He noticed that there were two objects up in the sky and they were glowing very brightly and flying edge to edge. And he described them as two discs round and very vividly bright. Now, excited by what he was seeing, Dan called his wife and the two other people who were sleeping in the house to come outside and look, and he urged them to witness this strange sight, and he exclaimed, you gotta come see this. Now, together, they watched as these bizarre objects would kind of like slowly zigzag across the sky and what Dan estimated must have been at least 20,000 miles per hour. In fact, Dan emphasized that he was certain these objects were not planets or conventional aircraft and mentioned his experience with aviation, having been in an F-5 fighter plane and helicopters, and asserted that what he saw was just something else entirely different. This was actually the first UFO or pair of UFOs that Dan saw. The second was near his farm. And Dan said that it was nighttime and he was heading into town on his bike and on way to eat dinner. And then out of the corner of his eye, he saw something. He described it as a little red light that was coasting above the power lines running above a neighboring farm. Now, at first, Dan was convinced that the red light was just a helicopter. But as we've seen, Dan always entertains the possibility that it's something else so he decided to try something. His bike was outfitted with lights similar to those found on a police bike, and so he flicks them on, hoping to get the attention of whatever this little red light is. Well, apparently, it worked. And Dan said that the light abruptly changed course and it began heading in his direction. Now, he claimed that the light came right over him, about 700 feet above him, and now it is directly overhead, and the moment it comes into position, the red light shines a light down on Dan, and now Dan's mind is racing. He still thinks it might be a helicopter, and he's listening as hard as he can for the sounds of rotors, but he doesn't hear anything. In fact, there's nothing. There's no engine. There's no blades. Nothing that would indicate a helicopter or even a drone. And in a matter of seconds, the object shines its blinding light on Dan. He looks up and then whoom, the light just blinks off. Now, although his vision was still kind of recovering from the light, Dan was able to see the object slowly float away from him and was convinced that the object moved slower than any helicopter would have. Now, that combined with the lack of noise left him convinced that he had seen something out of the ordinary. Now, another of his sightings actually took place while staying in a room on the 23rd floor of the Queen Elizabeth Hotel in Montreal, Canada. And at the time, he was focused on spiders weaving webs outside of his hotel window. And that was when he saw it, a big square thing, as he would say, entering his field of view. And again, Dan tried to be rational. He even claimed that it looked like a massive cluster of party balloons not a flying saucer, but as he stared, he grew less and less sure of his own conclusion. But he quickly dismissed this notion for two reasons. I mean, first of all, if it were party balloons, it would have been the biggest bunch he had ever seen. And secondly, he couldn't understand why party balloons wouldn't have been more colorful. Instead, what he observed was just a huge clump of gray and estimated that it must have been around 100 feet long and maybe 10 feet across, resembling this big square thing. And the object appeared and then suddenly stopped with no visible strings attached 
unlike a balloon or a blimp, and it simply came to a halt and slowly turned before drifting off over the river. And so it seems like Dan Aykroyd has seen UFOs, but here's where it gets very interesting. Apparently, the UFOs have seen him. And I don't just mean like what happened to him on the bike. Let me explain. The year is 2002. Dan is in the middle of production on a new UFO series titled Out There. But he's not just receiving a cushy producer credit. No, he's extremely involved. He's hand-selected researchers and eyewitnesses that he himself admires, and he's almost done. Eight episodes are finished in the can, so to speak, and so Dan begins shopping the show around, and he lands a contract for Out There to air on the Sci-Fi Channel. And now Dan finds himself in New York City, interviewing people to bring the first season of the show to a close. Now it's between interviews when Dan steps outside for a smoke break, and while taking a few minutes to relax, his phone rings, he picks up, he answers it. It's Britney Spears, apparently, who wants him to appear on an upcoming episode of Saturday Night Live. Now again, while such an experience might be odd for the average person, it wasn't strange for a celebrity like Dan. However, what happened next would be considered odd for anyone who experienced it. Dan recounted that he was still on the phone when he turned his head and saw something very strange. He told interviewers about the incident, that when he turned away briefly and turned back, he noticed a black Ford sedan parked across the road and he tried to look at the license plate, but it appeared fuzzy and it led him to think that's definitely a police car. And then he saw that there were two men standing by the car. One of them was a very tall guy who got out of the back seat. And this tall man stood in the middle of the street on 42nd Street and 8th Avenue and looked directly at Dan. At that moment, Dan was on the phone saying, hey, sure, of course, uh, I'd love to be on the show. And he saw the Ford, but when he turned back just a half a second later, the car was gone. Now, Dan emphasized that the car did not drive past him or make a U-turn as he would have definitely seen it on 42nd Street. He insisted the car must have vanished. Maybe it was cloaked. He doesn't know. And he questioned whether this was a warning directed at him as the man who got out of the back seat had given him a very dirty look. Now, Dan reiterated that the car had vanished and that he was certain of what he had seen, describing the event as happening incredibly fast. Now, two hours later, Dan and his team were informed that they were not to continue taping and that the show was canceled, with none of the episodes ever set to air. Now, Dan expressed his uncertainty about the experience, wondering if it could have been an encounter with the infamous Men in Black. These dark suited individuals who pop up in the aftermath of UFO sightings and throughout the decades, researchers have reported intimidation, accosting, and harassment from these mysterious characters who seem intent on keeping the whole UFO phenomenon a secret. Now, whether or not they represent government agents or are somehow directly related to the UFOs themselves is really anyone's guess. But the timing of Dan Aykroyd's experience is really interesting. Did the sci-fi channel cave to the demands of the men in black? I mean, after all, Dan's TV series out there has never been made public in any form or fashion. And not only has it not aired on TV, it hasn't even been released as a DVD or on any streaming platforms and probably never will. Meaning that despite the immense amount of time, energy, and money that was poured into this project, executives at the Sci-Fi Channel still found it better to cancel the series than to let it be seen. And because all of you guys have stayed with me to the end of the episode, I want you to comment underneath and say, why Jimmy? So that way I know who made it to the end and well, who didn't. If you want to see more stories like this from me, go ahead, hit that like and subscribe button for more content. As always, I love you all. Keep an open mind and I'll see you guys in the very next video.